Hello, everybody. This is Jason Hill with Word of Promise Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us today as right now we are within this series where we're talking about the church. And as I've stated so many times, when we talk about the church, we're not talking about a building. We're not talking about a structure out there, but we're actually talking about the people of God. We're talking about those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so within this series, we have been talking about so much as far as the development of the church, the maturity of the church, the connection that the church has to Jesus Christ as the head. And right now where we are and what we want to talk about concerning the church is actually the building up of God's church, the edifying of God's church, which are his people. And again, what we want to talk about during this series is again, all of the structuring that leads to the development of God's church and how it is equal to or uh, parallel to how there is an actual building up of a physical structure, a physical building. Again, it's the same way with us. And so our foundation scripture for this series or this portion of the series is over here in Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 19, where it says, Now, therefore, you are no longer slaves and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. He says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And catch this, verse 21, In whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. And so this scripture here shows us what is actually taking place with us as believers in Jesus Christ. We, as all these individuals, are being fitted together as these individual places where God temples that God lives in. We are being fitted together to create this one big, huge temple for God to dwell in and function in in a total and complete way. All of us, as you and every other believer in Jesus Christ, God is trying to fit us together so that we all, as these small individual temples, can create and be made as this one huge temple. That is what it, God is attempting to do with us. And that's what Paul was telling these group of uh, believers in Ephesians, these Gentiles. He says, you are no longer strangers. You are no longer foreigners, but you are now a member of this house, this household of God. You are a member of it. And what is happening is that there's this building up of all of us where we're being fitted together. And so, as I've mentioned before, that this uh, analogy of him giving us this being built up into this temple, this built up is happening the same way a physical structure is being built up. And we talked about uh, that. And so again, it, it shows us over here that we are again being built into this spiritual house. Look at what he says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. He says, coming to him as to a living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up at up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Again, he shows us that we are these living stones again, that you're going to be building this temple with, building this spiritual house, building this against church, this structure, this building. He says that we are the living stones that again are going to again be made ultimately to this one huge temple where God can dwell through all of us. And so again, that is what is happening with us. And like I said, in the same way that you build a natural structure, a natural temple, a natural building, again, he shows that it's a type and shadow of a, or a representation of what happens with us as well. Starting with when you have a building that you're attempting to build, of course you have the, the master planner 
who creates the blueprint first. And that's what God did. But then after now, he has now created the blueprint. First thing you do is you lay a cornerstone. And it shows us here that Jesus is that cornerstone of this structure that is being built. Uh, going back over here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. He says, now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Look what it says. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And so what we're going to do with our, throughout this series is we're going to specifically take a time to teach on exactly what it means for Jesus to be that chief cornerstone. But also it talks about after now the chief's cornerstone is placed, now the foundation is laid. And that's exactly what happens with a regular building. Once the chief cornerstone is placed, then you lay the foundation. Look what he says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 through 11. He says, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. And here it is. You are God's building. He says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, Paul says, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So notice again, he shows us here that again, that Jesus Christ is the foundation that is to be laid. Paul said that I laid and there's other scriptures that talked about the apostles and the prophets laid that foundation. And so we're going to take time and do a lesson specifically on that, what it means for them to lay the foundation and how, again, ultimately it affects the building of this temple where God wants to dwell in. And then we talked about the fact that now, after you've laid the foundation, now you have materials that you use to actually build up the structure. Remember, we are the living stones that, again, that is to be built on top of that foundation. And look at what he says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. He says, "If now if anyone builds on this foundation, which is Jesus Christ, with gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw. And so here he shows us the type of materials that can be used to build up this structure that we uh, as these living stones are going to be designed with or are going to be placed on us and in us and through us. And he says that it can be wood, hay or straw, or it could be gold, silver or precious stone. And so we're going to do a, a lesson on that as well to talk about, again, what are these different type of materials? How do these different type of materials uh, are, are being used to build us up? And to have us place be placed on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And so we're going to talk about that and the negative effects or positive effects of which material that you use. And so we're going to do an individual lesson specifically on that as well. But what I want to talk about today is and what I want to start with, of course, is the fact that Jesus is that chief cornerstone. And we want to talk about what that means. So going back again. Over here to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 20, it says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So we see clearly in this scripture, in the New Testament, it shows that Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone, but it's also, uh, again, shown in other areas as well in the New Testament, as in 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 7, it says, Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble being disobedient to the word 
to which they also were appointed. So not only did Paul mention it, but Peter mentioned it as well. And in that scripture, he mentions the fact that him being this chief cornerstone was going to be a stone of stumbling to some. It was going to be a rock of offense to some. It was going to be something that people stumbled over because they were disobedient to the word. And we know again that Jesus Christ is that chief cornerstone that it shows that there are going to be some that stumble over that are going to be some that again are offended offended by again by by jesus and again so we see paul mention it we see peter mention it and this quote actually here is a quote when he says the stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone is actually an old testament quote so again in the old testament it mentions this as well as in psalms chapter 118 verse 22 where it says the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and so again this scripture here is the scripture that they quoted from when Paul mentioned it, when Peter mentioned it. And not only did they mention it, but Jesus mentioned it as well. And he says, speaking of himself again, uh, speaking of himself, it says, Jesus said to them in Matthew verse 21, excuse me, chapter 21, verse 42. It says, Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? That's Psalm 118. He says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in his eyes. So not only did Paul mention it, not only did Peter mention it again, but it also mentioned in the Old Testament, but then also Jesus mentioned it as well. And where I want to pinpoint right now, speaking of this, is what did what reason did Jesus mention this? What was he saying in the surrounding scriptures to help us to understand what it is that he was talking about as far as him being this chief cornerstone that was rejected? So let's look at Matthew chapter verse 21, chapter 21, going a couple verses back to see exactly what it is. Because ultimately what we're trying to do is find out what does it mean for Jesus to be this chief cornerstone? And again, if you remember being a chief cornerstone meaning it uh, means that everything else that that structure is built uh, uh, from all of the measurements all of the design are going to be determined by the location of that chief cornerstone everything that the blueprint has on it for everything to be done is going to now be based off of where they place that chief cornerstone and remember jesus is that chief cornerstone so let's see what it says in matthew chapter 21 verse 33 it says here another parable this is jesus speaking speaking in this parable he says there was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it dug a wine press in it and built the tower it says he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servant to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed another, killed one, and stoned another. So this is this parable that Jesus Christ is speaking. And he's when he's speaking this parable, he's saying that there was this landowner who leased his property. For people to be able to again use his property, uh, to for for uh, uh, he leased it to vine dressers for people to take that uh, um, that property and use it to again sow seed and and produce fruit. That's what he he leased it to them for, and so he then sent his servant to go then and get the the fruit that was produced there, and they ended up the vine dressers killed his his uh, uh, service that he sent. And that is actually a type and shadow of a rep or a representation of God, again, having the Jews uh, uh, there and, and again, having this covenant with them. And then ultimately, again, sending his prophets 
to again to tell them the way to, to go, to speak to them what it is that God had called them to and what he wanted from them. And they ultimately rejected his prophets and they killed his prophets. He's speaking of, again, the Jews at that time. So let's keep on going. In verse 36, he says, again, he sent other servants more than the first and they did likewise to them. Again, he sent more prophets to them, more uh, to them, to tell them, Isaiah and Jeremiah and all of these different individuals that were sent to them to tell them, Elijah and Elijah, uh, all these different individuals, again, that, that were persecuted, again, by those that he had covenant with, with were, which were the Jews. He says, and then here it is, verse 37, then last of all, he sent his son to them saying they will respect my son but when the vine dressers saw the son they said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and seize his inheritance so they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him what do you think this is a representation of what they did with jesus again when he sent jesus after he sent all of his prophets he sent jesus to come to this earth and what did the jews do they persecuted him and had him placed on the cross and so again let's keep on going verse 40 therefore when the owner of the vineyard comes this is Jesus asking this question to these individuals who he's speaking of right there, who he's actually speaking of what they're about to do uh, to him and how they're rejecting him. He says, therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, when God comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? He said, they said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Verse 42, Jesus said to them, have you never read? Meaning that what I just described to you, the scriptures speak of as well. And it's of what you guys are about to do as well. Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And so what is Jesus speaking of here? He's showing these Jews that him coming was that son coming to them to show them again uh, uh, and to bring fruit for what God had assigned those vine dressers for. And he's saying that God now has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth and to be the sacrifice for mankind and to accomplish uh, for mankind what he couldn't and to do what was needed. And what did they ultimately do? They crucified him. They had him crucified. They had him sacrificed on the cross, again, out of what we read earlier, their disobedience to the word, their rejection of what it is that Jesus Christ had done and who he was. And ultimately, again, that's what it means that he was that chief cornerstone. He was that cornerstone through which God is going to do everything that he has been sent to. Uh, he has plan to be done that the individual vine dressers couldn't do and they ultimately killed his prophets they ultimately killed jesus but again through that god is going to make jesus this cheap cornerstone that he's going to now design everything that he wants done to be based off of it's going to be based off of Jesus being that rejected stone that came to the earth, that lived, that performed and accomplished what it was that God wanted accomplished so that now everything that God wants done is going to be on the basis of what it is that Jesus Christ has done. And so when we return, we're going to talk more about, again, Jesus being this chief cornerstone and what it means, again, for him to be who he is and for him to accomplish what it is that he accomplished and how that then leads to the development of what God is creating with this temple. I'll see you in a second. All right, we are back. And what we are talking about is the fact that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And when we, again, mention a chief cornerstone, it is the stone that is placed 
that everything from the blueprint is measured and determined by and from everything that again ultimately affects the design and the creation of the structure or the building speaking in a natural sense again it all starts with where the chief cornerstone is placed and we mentioned that or the scriptures mentioned that Jesus is that chief corner stone and we said that again that this ultimately means that it is now what we are to be built up as what we are to be created as this huge temple is going to then be based off of who jesus is and what it is that he accomplished and this scripture over here in matthew helps us to better see that and define that Look at uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am, that I, the son of man am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but what do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And look at what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And catch this. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, uh, yeah, I will build my church on this rock, on this chief cornerstone is what I'm going to build my church. And what is the rock that he is speaking of? It is the revelation that Peter had of who Jesus was. The fact that he is the son of the living God. He is God in the flesh on this earth. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one. He is the one, again, whom God uh, God came down in flesh onto the earth to actually do something. And again, Jesus said that on this rock, this rock that is set, that is placed, that is that cornerstone, is what now all of my church is going to be built out of. It's going to be built out of the revelation of who I am. And also what I did out of who I am, what I actually accomplished out of who I am. The fact that I was God on the earth and I came to this earth to do something. And so that of who he is and what he did is the chief cornerstone that everything else is going to be determined by, is going to be formed by, is going to be developed by. It's all based off of who Jesus is and what it is that he accomplished. And so let's look over here at this scripture. Let's kind of see that fact, the fact of, again, who Jesus is and what it is that he accomplished. Look at Romans chapter five, verse eight. It says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. God is who? He is the one, again, that has the master plan that created the blueprint. So out of his love, again, that blueprint is created. He sent Jesus, it says. He commanded his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He did something. He accomplished for us. The Christ, the anointed one, God in the flesh, came and did something. What did he do? Of course, we know he lived the perfect sinless life and then he died as a sacrifice. That was something that he did. And that is something that everything now is. It is a chief cornerstone that everything that God is doing to build up this temple that we are a part of. It is based off of that which Jesus did in dying for us. But not just that. It says, Verse nine, much more than having now been justified by his blood as through his death, being right with God uh, again through his sacrifice, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. He says much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So not only did Jesus die 
but he was raised from the dead. That was another accomplishment of him doing something based out of who he was, God in flesh. He was raised from the dead and it says that it benefits us in that we are saved by his life, by him being raised from the dead and him being alive and him sitting at the right hand of God. So again, what does this scripture show us? It show us all of these benefits that happened to us because of something that Jesus did and because of who he was. And that's my point with that is when he's talking about this chief cornerstone, that means again, what Jesus Christ did and accomplished out of who he was is what everything else in the forming of this building and the forming of this temple is going to be dictated by and determined by. Again, that's what a, again, a master planner does. They have their blueprint. And then once the chief cornerstone is placed, everything else now is going to be based out of the placement of that chief cornerstone. Well, again, who Jesus is and what he accomplished for us through his living the perfect life, him dying for us, him being buried, him being raised from the dead, him sitting at the right hand of God right now is the basis of which everything that is to take place with us that is in God's plan is going to happen. Jesus being the chief cornerstone means, again, who he is and what he accomplished determines everything that God wants to do. And again, we can't be those that stumble over that and try to find something other than him uh, to, to make it about what God wants to take place with us. It has to be based off of who Jesus is and what he accomplished and what he provided. And again, God laying that chief cornerstone is actually him sending Jesus to be who he was, to live the perfect life, to be the sacrifice for mankind, to be buried and to take captivity captive, to be raised from the dead and to be seated at the right hand of God where mankind can look to him. That's that chief cornerstone of that accomplishment by Jesus Christ. And that's why we can see so many different scriptures that talk about that it is through him or by him that all of these things that God wants us to partake in and to receive and to walk in are accomplished. It is all through him. And that means, again, it is by him being that chief cornerstone that everything that he wants as this temple to take place. And that's why we can read over here, such as in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, where it says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting co uh, covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. Look what he says, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, what is he speaking of here? This God making you complete in every good work is going to be through Jesus in the sense that it is on the basis of what Jesus Christ did and, and who he was, that that is going to be accomplished in your life on the if on the basis of what Jesus did and who he was. And again, and if not for that, if not for what Jesus did and who he was, that wouldn't happen. And so that is Jesus being that chief cornerstone. It means that him being who he was and accomplishing what he did, again, is again the, the now the source or the head corner of that building that is built, being built, which is us. Again, everything that is taking place with us is all determined by that and, and, and going to be on the basis of the blueprint of God as a result of that chief cornerstone. And that's why it says even in John chapter one, verse 17, it says, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Again, notice that through Jesus Christ, that grace and that truth is through who he is 
and what he accomplished when he came to this earth, died, buried, raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of God is now where grace and truth can now reign in your life. And that's what the next scripture talks about in Romans chapter five, verse 21, where it says, so so that as life, excuse me, as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through who, though? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, meaning what it is through what it is that he accomplished. And that's my point that I'm constantly trying to bring out and make simple to you is the fact of what he accomplished is now the basis for which everything that God wants to come to pass will come to pass. It is based off of what it is that he did out of who he was. That is that chief cornerstone now to which the entire building is built. And look, let's look at some other examples. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. Look what he says. Through Jesus, he says, Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Again, the, the fact that we are reconciled to God is through what Jesus Christ has accomplished the fact that we can be reconciled to God and be made living stones that now can be a part of this structure is all based on that cornerstone of what Jesus did and what he accomplished for us. Again, without that, again, none of this can happen without that. And without us recognizing that, again, we won't partake in any of the true building up uh, or being built up as a part of that temple. Look at what it says in Titus chapter three, verse four through six. It says, but when the kindness and the love of our God and Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you keep saying these through him giving us the spirit of God, that the spirit of God can now take us through this washing of regeneration, where there's this imparting of a, in us of life and this renewing within us where our thinking is renewed, our mindsets are renewed. We're renewed from having death to life, from having darkness to light. All of this renewing that takes place with us by the Spirit of God is on the basis or through Jesus being that chief cornerstone. It's through what he did and who he was and him coming to this earth, dying, being buried, being raised from the dead, and him now seated at the right hand of God. Him actually accomplishing all of that is the reason why now the Spirit of God can come and do that work on the inside of us. It is the reason why now we are reconciled. And again, and that is that, again, part of that whole uh, uh, creating of this huge temple that we are a part of, that now he can take this temple uh, that we are as individuals who have been reconciled, and he can now again wash us, cleanse us, renew us, Take us that had these certain materials now and build us up with these new renewed materials by the spirit of God. The fact that he can do that is all on the basis of who Jesus is and what he accomplished for us. That's Jesus being that chief cornerstone. And then in Philippians chapter one, verse 11 where it says, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. We being filled with the fruit of righteousness, he says here, are by Jesus Christ. Many way, they are on the basis. I hope you continue to see this. They are on the basis of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us and did for us. Through him coming to this earth, living, dying, being buried, being raised from the dead. That actual work that he accomplished is him setting that chief cornerstone to which all of the rest of the structure can now be determined and dictated and made according to the blueprint of the master planner, which is God. 
And again, that's what ultimately it means for Jesus to be this chief cornerstone. And I wrote this. I said this. I said every measurement, every piece of placement of material that is used in the building of a structure is determined by the initial placement of the chief cornerstone. Likewise, the foundation and design of the living stones used to create God's new temple made up of those of us that believe in Jesus Christ is determined by who Jesus is and what he accomplished for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. Again, just like when you have this natural structure, this place that I'm in right now, someone had a blueprint and when they had that blueprint, the first chief corner of this place was placed. And now from that chief corner were all the measurements, all of the design that was according to the blueprint was determined by or, 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 or yeah, determined its placement was determined by the location of that that uh, chief cornerstone. And again, it's the same thing with us. Everything that God is wanting to do with us as these living stones that he wants to build up, that he wants to create this huge temple is all determined by who Jesus is and what he accomplished. That's what it means for him to be that chief cornerstone. It means that his work that he accomplished, God sending him to die, to live the perfect life, the sinless life, the life of God on the earth now, and what he accomplished for man in being able to be a sacrifice for them. No other person could do that. No person, again, could uh, um, actually live the life needed to actually be the sacrifice for man. And him being that sacrifice for mankind then made him qualified to be raised and seated at the right hand of God and to be the source for all of us to look to. Well, that work that he did, that work that was accomplished, that work that was finished is the chief cornerstone that all everything else is determined and dictated by in God's overall master plan. And again, so that's why we as believers in Jesus Christ have to recognize that it's all about what Jesus did. It's all about what he accomplished. It's all about what he provided and the fact that it is a finished work, that it is done, that he has done everything that is necessary. And so now it takes for, uh, us not being as many of the Jews were and even the Gentiles were as well, where they, again, they saw the stone and they stumbled over it through disobedience to, to the word, through re they rejected what it is that Jesus did and what he accomplished and what he provided. But for those of us, the scripture says that believe he's precious. What he did is precious. What he accomplished is precious. Who he is is precious to us and beneficial to us because we know that everything that God is wanting to do is based off of him. And so, again, what we're going to get into next is after you lay that chief cornerstone, you then lay the foundation. And we're going to talk about what that means next week. After now, Jesus has done the work, accomplished the work of coming to this earth, dying, being buried, being raised from the dead and being seated at the right hand of God. Now you need someone to come and present that truth to people so that they can now stand on that foundation and that's what ultimately it means to lay the foundation and that's what we're going to talk about next week the laying of the foundation and the actual placement of the foundation to which the structure is to be built on top of and that is the truth of the gospel of jesus christ the truth of what jesus did the word of what he accomplished being proclaimed and we're going to talk about that next week god bless you and i'll see you next time